For this video, I'm going to demonstrate the, the hyperthyroidism exam. Um, to start off, I'll introduce myself. Hi, my name is Evan Graham. I'm with Internal Medicine. Uh, and I'm just going to be demonstrating the hyperthyroidism exam on you, if that's okay. I'll go on to wash my hands. Uh, and then, before starting, I want to make sure that the person is stable and doesn't need any kind of acute medical care. Going on from there, uh, I'll ask for a set of vitals um, uh, and things that you can note for on the vitals. Uh, so they can be tachycardic and they can also have an irregular, irregular heartbeat. Um, especially in uh, elderly population. Uh, and they can also be hypertensive, uh, and this is a systolic hypertension uh, with a wide impulse pressure um, uh, from the high output state that you get from hyperthyroidism. Lastly, I'd ask for a BMI, um, especially somebody with borderline hyperthyroidism. Um, they can uh, develop weight loss from this and have a low BMI, so I'd look for that as well. Going on from there, uh, just on general inspection, things that you can note, um, they can have like a scared spaces, uh, and this is from the increased sympathetic uh, drive from hyperthyroidism. Um, you can see uh, fidgeting as well, kind of tremors as well, uh, along with that. Uh, Moving on to the head and neck uh, portion of the exam, uh, looking at the hairline, you can see for any kind of hairline thinning, um, if there are any signs of alopecia. Um, you can look for uh, uh, thyroid scare or lid retraction. Um, this is caused by the increased uh, sympathetic drive causing um, uh, the lid to be retracted. Uh, and what you're actually looking for is if you can just look straight ahead for me, um, and you're looking for any evidence of the white sclera between, uh, you shouldn't be able to see it between the iris and the superior uh, eyelid. Um, if that's negative, another test you can do is lid leg. Um, so if you can just follow my finger up and down, just with your eyes, and just following it downwards. Um, and again, if you can ever see the sclera superior to the iris there, um, that would additionally be a positive finding. Um, so after that, we'll look for ophthalmopathy. Um, so to start off for that, um, we'll look for exothalamus. Um, so you go from behind, and what you're looking for from over top is you can see the eyeball in front of the orbit at any point. Um, that's a positive finding. Um, from there, just examining the eyes, there's complications that comes uh, uh, with graves. So you can look for signs of chemosis, which is a uh, scleral edema. You can look for conductivitis. Uh, sometimes you can see scleral ulcerations, uh, and this is actually caused by uh, difficulty or an inability to blink. Um, sometimes uh, individuals can get ophthalmoplegia or the inability to move their eyes. Uh, and so most commonly, uh, the most common muscle affected with this is the inferior rectus so not the muscle. So I'll just get you to look down for me, and that looks fine in both eyes. Um, and then lastly, uh, rarely you can get uh, optic nerve uh, lesions, uh, and this is actually caused by stretching uh, of the optic nerve. So if you can just cover up one eye for me, and then looking straight at my nose, how many fingers am I holding up? Two. Okay. And I would test in all four quadrants in both uh, eyes, just testing uh, uh, cranial nerve tubes there. Um, moving on from there, we'll go on to the peripheral uh, exam. Uh, just looking at the nails, um, uh, so you can look for uh, onycholysis, um, and so uh, this is called plumber's nail, so it's actually splitting of the nails, uh, most commonly in the fourth nail. Uh, additional things that you can look for is actually um, uh, seen clubbing, so I'll just get you to do shamrock sign where you put your fingers together and you look for the diamond sign in there, which is a normal finding. Um, so Graves uh, acropachy is actually thickening of that region and uh, get positive uh, clubbing. From there, moving on, uh, you can look for pulmonary erythema, um, and the hands can also be wet uh, just from the increased blood flow. Um, you can look for uh, a tremor as well. Um, so if you just hold the hand up for me, I'll just put a piece of paper to exacerbate this, and uh, this will be a fine, uh, high frequency tremor that somebody might have. From there, just examining the skin, so you can look for signs of hyperpigmentation. And in severe hyperthyroidism, uh, what happens is you actually get uh, increased metabolism of the cortisol, uh, and that causes an increased release of both ACTH, but also melanocyte stimulating hormone that causes the hyperpigmentation. Uh, again, you can look for alopecia, um, signs of vitiligo uh, as well. You can test for proximal muscle weakness, so if you can just hold your arms up for me, push down. Stand up for me as well by crossing arms. Perfect. And sit down. That's good. You can 
uh, Lewis and auscultate the heart, and this can listen for any kind of flow murmurs from the high output state. If I was concerned, I could do an examination um, for hyperthyroidism uh, for a high output, uh, uh, hy sorry, not hyperthyroidism, uh, examine for heart failure from a high output state as well as get some hyperthyroidism. Lastly, uh, you can examine uh, reflexes, um, and this is just uh, for hyperreflexia, so we can do the patellar reflex and see if there's any kind of hyperreflexia. That concludes uh, my hyperthyroidism.